So hello everyone, um, welcome again to another tutorial. Today I'm going to teach how to create a generative planting scheme in Grasshopper using uh, LiDAR point clouds information and using the image sampler method. So before starting with that, what we're going to do is you need to get uh, LiDAR uh, data um, or we can get point clouds data. But in case you don't have it, you can also use a DEM, a digital elevation model or a digital surface model, and use it in an equivalent way. And I will teach both methods. Um, so first, I'm going to start preparing the image. I'm going to use in the image sampler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open here in open in, in cloud compare. I open a point cloud of the region that I want, and then the first thing I have to do is I'm going to choose the classification as a scalar field here instead of using the RGB. And then this image has been previously classified, so it's very easy to use it. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to choose the topo lanfer, which is much easier to distinguish between different and clouds classification. And if you go here to the display ranges, you will notice if you move this ranges, you will identify particular classification types. So this is ground. This corresponds to the ground points. I'm going to do is a segmentation using ranges. So I'm going here to this tool called filter points by value, and then I'm going to export it. And this I'm going to rename it as ground. Okay. I'm going back to my cloud here, and instead of using that range, I'm gonna. Sorry, instead of using that range, I'm gonna now go to the next range. This is um, low plants. This is something that I'm not interested in. This case, shrubs. These are vineyards, so they're identifying these shrubs there. In case you want to, for example, create a plantation or a planting system or with uh, or generative planting system with this in Grasshopper, you, you may want to export this or you can export the next one which is uh, the vegetation, the trees, the tree canopy. So this is another of my target I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to again export this and I'm going to call him trees. And then once I have done this, I'm going to grab my ground and my trees and merge them. But before doing that, I'm going to color them because the image sampler works better with a grayscale. So I can color directly here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the ground point and I want to color um, as it will be an inverted image. So I'm going to use, I'm going to edit colors. Set unique, and I'm gonna set up black or a gray color, a dark gray color. Okay, that's it. And I'm going to the trees because I want them to be also light color, have contrast. I'm gonna go to edit colors and set unique color as white, not completely white, but just so you can. Now distinguish the contrast between both of them. So now I'm going to choose both. I'm going to use this tool called Merge Multiple. And when it asks, do you want to generate a scalar field with the original cloud index? And I'll say no. And now once I have this, I have one point cloud that merged both ground and the trees. OK, so if we, if we zoom in, you will see it there, the points. OK. So once I've done this, what I want, if I go to the top view, you'll understand it very well there. That's how it looks, the image. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this. And I'm going to save it as an E55, because it's a format that can be opened in Rhino. E55, and I'm going to put a name called Eight One Two Trees, Trees and Ground. E55, OK. I will save it. You want to replace it? Yes, because I already have it there. So it will be replaced. So once I has been replaced, I'm going to now open my grasshopper. 
correct. In Grasshopper, I'm going to open this file by going here or import or open. Um, I'm going to open the 55 format, which is there. Okay. Once it's open the format, as you can see here, you can you import it with the color. So you there are several options. You can work with this directly in Grasshopper if you want. So you can perhaps avoid importing the points of the grounds and only keeping the points of the vegetation. But then you cannot generate, uh, you cannot control it or parameterize the information. So that's why we want to use a technique with the image sampler that will help you to control the amount of vegetation, increase the seed, the variation, the heights, etc. Because of that, we're doing this method. Otherwise, you can use only the clouds corresponding to the trees and try to visualize them. Okay. Because we are using a generative algorithm, that's why we need to manipulate this information. So what we're going to do is we grab the top, we double click on the top, and then we just drag it outside the viewport. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to scale the viewport so we have the nearly the same size than or proportion than the than our image okay so that is what we have once we have this we go to the command and we put view capture to file And it will open these settings. So what we're going to do is not, we're not going to use a transparent background. We're going to use it as it is. We're going to go to the top, correct? The resolution, we can, we should use the same resolution as the pixels are there. So this is a 1,000 kilo, it's one kilometer, 1,000 pixels. So each pixel is basically one meter. What we're going to use is 1000 by 2000. We can multiply by the same ratio. So what we can do is put 2000 and 4000 if we want to increase the level of accuracy and detail. Okay, but 1000, what 2000 is fine. We can scale by 1.1. We can scale by 1.5. For example, if we want to increase some detail, we, we, can, we can increase 1.5 the scale. And we put, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put, the, put this in the desktop or anywhere else. So just put it in the correct place for the video tutorials. So um, here I'm going to call it um, Trees LiDAR. Okay. And we're going to save it as a PNG file. Once we have done that, we can close this and we can delete that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do, um, we're going to edit that in Photoshop. We're going to open in Photoshop. This is our Photoshop and we're going to open that image. Where is the image? Is in video tutorials, Grasshopper, Tree Slider. So we have it here. As you can see, it's a good resolution. What we can do now is to crop it. We should crop it exactly with the size and the pixels that we're going to use. There and here as well. That's it. So we have cropped our image. Maybe it's not very good here on the top. So we're gonna recrop this part. There. And we're gonna save. Okay, so we have our this image. This is one method where we're gonna use using the existing vegetation. But what if we want to create our own vegetation using our own image? 
So what we're going to do is now go here to the grasshopper and we're going to use something called a uh, plugin called Docofossor. So there are previous um, tutorials on this. I recommend you to have a look. For the Docofossor, we're going to import an ASC file and we're going to need a file path. We're going to sample as two. And we're going to need a rate shift here. And then we're going to need the mesh here to generate. And we're going to define the path right now. So we go to this one here. Just need to wait a little bit. Should open so now open let's go to perspective well you cannot see it so it's better to start a new perspective meters go to perspective you will have here a tile okay so we have here the tile so once we have this what we can do is use a custom profile or custom preview, sorry, connect the geometry, and then use a color swatch, uh, black color, completely black. Okay, so if we go to the top view, we're gonna have this view. We can also use this view to generate our uh, image some sample so for example we will able to select some particular values within the image for example the darker areas or the lighter areas also i will teach in another tutorial how to use uh, another generative algorithm using a different plugin um, how to calculate a, for example aspect or a slope and locate the vegetation with according to the specific value of the slope or the aspect so this is our image for now that it works it works okay so what we're gonna do is the same process we're going to kind of create a viewport in which we have the same proportion That should be fine. And then we're gonna use the same command view view capture to file. Again, we don't make it transparent. It's 1000, 2000. This is gonna be our scale factor. And we just save it. We're gonna call it trees the uh, you don't have the ASI or the DM, and you, you can do similar image sampling in, for example, uh, RGS, RGS, and um, or you can use QGIS. Um, so there are different methods, and then you can modify these in Photoshop as well if you want. So once you have done this, we just turn off all of this for it. We don't need the preview for now. So now we're going again to Photoshop and we're going to open and manipulate this a little bit more. So we open here the Latrice DM. We crop it. Crop there. You can use also GIMP, which is an open source software similar to Photoshop to edit these things. So here, like that. Okay. So this is what we have. We can save it and we can generate another copy. We will call it number two. Also PNG and we can invert the image in the judgments invert and so we can have an inverted image 
can correct the levels if we want. We want it lighter or darker. We can correct the slightly the levels and click OK and save. So now all what we have done is just to prepare all our images for the image sampler. So now the we're going to the perspective. Our first step for the image sampler is we need to create a rectangle. So we put a rectangle here. And for the rectangle, we need to define here um, a plane. Don't need to worry about that because it's the x, y for now. So we need to define an x value and y value, which is should be our grid, the same proportion or the same values that we have in our image. So they will match perfectly. So in this rectangle, so we make one of 1,000 meters. And we make, this is the x, and we make another one of 2,000 meters. Oh, sorry. And connect it there. Correct? And this is the first step. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a mesh plane. So here is the mesh plane. And we are going to connect the mesh plane, the rectangle with the boundary. OK. And then we want to define the width of the count and the height of the count. So for that, we need to use the same dimensions we define here. So for the width, we use the x. And for the height, we use the y. Now we approach, we don't see any, any mesh because by default they're turned off. So if you go to display and put preview mesh, preview mesh, it will take a little bit and then you will display all the meshes. So this is one by one. And there are 1,000 in one direction, 2,000 in another direction. It's good to check, but it's not good to have this on because it will create excessive uh, processing time. So once we have done this, in reality, we don't need this on. We can turn off the preview. So after that, we need to calculate phase normals. Phase normals. OK, so we just connect these meshes with this mesh to estimate the normals. OK, so because this is taking time in the processing, we can also turn off this preview. So now what we're going to do is here, we are going to put our image sampler. OK, so that's the image sampler. We need to connect this with the image sampler. And we can do something is the Stretch it as similar to our um, proportion. And then we double click on top and we are going to open it. We're going to file the path and we're going to choose freeze the trees from LiDAR. Okay, once we have there, we put the auto update. So if you create a new line here, it will be auto updated. Um, saving file. Okay, and what we're going to do is put here the domain exactly 0 to 1000 and the y 0 to 2000. So we need to match all these things. Because we're using, there are different methods to use the channels. We can use the red channel, we can use the green channel, the transparency or the alpha channel, or different colors and hues. But we're going to use here the color brightness because that is what we're going to use as a sampling method. Okay? And so we put. So now what we're going to do is add here, uh, we need to select some ranges as part of the image sampling. So we're going to use a cool pattern component. And the cool pattern will work with small values smaller than a particular brightness or a particular value that we choose here, or larger than those values. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a smaller than and I'm going to put a larger than. 
Okay, I'm gonna put it over here, over here. So I'm gonna connect here. So as you can see, it's calculating. I also wants to leave that. I will turn off the preview of the plane and I will keep this preview on. Okay, so once we have done this, I'm gonna connect this which is the pattern of the list to the value smaller than so now it's simply not showing anything and then I'm going to use the output of this image sampler as the input in one of the values and then I'm going to define um, for example 0 0.3 the values but before connecting I want to show you something I want to create a panel with this panel, you will be able to read all of these values, which is correspond to brightness, because that's what we're using for sampling in this case. So it's generating. So as you can see here, these are the brightness values. So we have 0 0.84, 0 0.7. So let's start with 0 0.3 and see how it works. So it's showing, showing all the values, so it's very awkward. So what we have is our value is not kind of appropriate. Let's try, sorry, let's move this one here. This one, this one here. I want to use the same one here and connect this list over here. Now let's work with the larger than. And so you can see a, little, a completely different story where you can start seeing some, some of these normals quite similar to what we have here in our image sampler. Okay, so we have the whole. If we go to the top, maybe it's better. So you can start seeing the similarities of this corner, for example. Okay, so it seems that it's kind of working. Okay, we, we can correct this later, this value, okay? So you can use either of them depending on what are your values and what you want to show. If you want to show the opposite, the darker areas, you may need to use smaller or larger than. But this is generating a lot of process, so I will prefer to turn off this preview and just keep, again, my normals. Or, sorry for that. Uh, I want to keep my plane just as I have as a reference here, okay? So, till now, this is our image sampler. It has worked pretty okay, we just save. And we're gonna group all of these, and we're gonna call it match sampler okay we can also group of these and we call it the rain from DTM so once we have this what we want to is like we have too many points okay so we need to reduce those points and reduce randomly so what we're gonna do is here create a um, random reduce okay the random reduce needs a list this leads come from the cool pattern but also we need a reduce um, or what we're gonna remove, a, a parameter. We can put a number, 
Also, we can make a subtraction using the list that we have here of of um, of normals. Okay. So what we can we need to do is here a list length component, and then we need a subtraction. So you have here. Check at the number. Check at the number. We have six hundred. 10,000 values. So it's quite a lot. So what we're going to need to do is just to reduce those values. So we connect here to the reduce. Now we connect this also to the list. So we have the complete list here. And then we use this list as the first value for the subtraction. And here we're going to put a slider which corresponds to the number of subtractions we want to do. Let's start with 15,000 or 12,000. The problem is I don't want this. What I want is 0, 12,000 and let's say 25,000. Okay, so there, there it is. And so we're going to connect this to the reduce. So now what you see here is a much considerable number. We reduce considerably the number of points because we don't have trees every one meter or one 0 0.5 meters. We just have it with certain distance. So with this, we have reduced those numbers. We can reduce more, as you can see. Or we can go getting closer. Okay, so let's keep it there. This is a good number. Or we can even reduce this even more and just put eight thousand. See, and so we can control better our reductions. Now, what we want to is just generate a seed. So we can have a random generation, okay? And we can reset that all the time. So for that, we just need number, perhaps we can try with 35. It comes, it comes here. So we have our seed, we have everything, okay? So now we have the points. Now our next, step is just to project those points into the topography. So what we're going to do is a mesh ray, grab the mesh ray, and we're going to connect here first these points. So where we got these points, we got from this list, right? Then we need the direction. So we're going to use a set uni because we are moving them in the set direction. And then we're going to need the mesh. So the mesh can come from here. Okay. So now we have them. What we need to is just change this preview. And so what we have is all of these points projected in that mesh, the mesh ray. So now we have all the points generated in terms of the mesh. So what we're going to do is we're going to group all of these and we're going to call it points projected, points projected, that's fine, okay? We have already this. Now we have here points. Each of these points represents the base of each tree. So there are many ways we can perhaps represent the trees. For those who want a rapid visualization, we can perhaps use a primitive. So what we can use at the point, connect the point there. So we so from this point we just can add a primitive, let's say a con. So these points represent the base of this coin this con and we don't need this 
anymore. And then we can have a radius, let's say, of 2 meters. And a length as well of 8 meters. This could be a very rapid visualization of the trees for different purposes. You don't spend that much time visualizing them. So this is one way, for example, using the points and then the coin. But you can also generate a sort of random values if you want for this. I'm going to show you another way. We're going to collect here and it is a free generator and then it's a coin and we can put here a rapid tree generator okay so but that's why not i don't want to show i want to create a property a proper tree and have some variation so what we're going to do is i'm going to create a i'm going to disconnect this And I'm going to create a line representing the trunk. So I'm going to create a line in each of these points. And for that, I need a line SDL. So once we have the line SDL, let's put it over here. We're just going to connect. Is the X represents the start? Then we need a direction. I need a set direction. You need set. Uh, you need set for the direction okay now we need length and then is when we we need we want to generate a randomness so we just create something called random use a random component here and for the random component we may need a range okay so we construct a domain to generate that range and we will need also a length, okay? Uh, sorry, a list of the number of those random values. So for that, we need, we need uh, to use a list length, okay? So this list length, we, we grab all this information from the x value here, which is all our points, and we use that as a list to generate. We, we need to construct a domain domain we can is is basically the, so, the height of that trunk so let's imagine the trunks in this area vary depending if it are eucalyptus maybe between five meters okay and 12 meters okay this can vary okay and once we have connected all of this, we don't need to add this preview. Then we use this random value for the length, and we can turn off this preview. So you see here, the trunks have been generated, okay, with lines. If you want to, be, you can create, a, um, for example, a, a pipe from those values from those um, lines and then have some thickness but that's what we don't we don't want that so once we have generated this line we want to now generate a sphere on the top that represents the canopy okay this is just for a rapid representation so we need to calculate first we need to estimate first the endpoints okay and we just connect the endpoints there And what we'll need is, you can use a mesh sphere, a sphere, mesh sphere. So we're going to use the end value of that line as the base. Okay, so you see the mesh is very big. So what we're going to do now is we need to generate a radius and also the U count and the V count, which is our numbers. 
representing the angles uh, of the mesh of uh, in the each of the divisions in both directions okay so what we're gonna do here is use a division command or component division and we're gonna divide these numbers randomly generated here let's say two or three over there and we are using this as a radius so we control our radius and our radius are also random okay so if we have why would it need this important if we have a small trunk we need a small canopy makes sense right so that's why we use this and we divided this value so once we have generated this we just can simply calculate the number of U's and B. So we can use 5, for example. And let's try to have the same value for both. So the more number we add here, the larger the number, the more defined and higher the resolution of the sphere. The smaller it is, the coarser it will be less resolution because it has less number of segments. This determines the number of segments. So we don't need this on. Sorry, I made a mistake. This is the one that we don't need the preview. But we need this preview. So we have then our trees. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we can give these a custom visualization. So for that, we can create a custom preview. Custom preview and connect there. We turn off this preview and we can use a uh, color swatch that is green. Okay, to represent trees. Maybe this one is interesting. Correct. And then we just can copy this. and use something similar for our trunks and for the trunks we can use something let's say punish okay so that's our custom visualizations okay once we have done this we just can group all of these and we can call tree generator okay so we have all of this now we can turn on our preview here so it's an ugly color so we just can choose another representing the ground there. so then we have all the trees as the image sampler okay so if we go to the image sampler here it is now we can play with the um, values here okay so we can decrease or increase and this will change completely the visualization here but it will take time because of the processing so 0 0.2 look it will completely change because it will grab all all the random values so you need to be careful and you need to analyze this panel in order to know what you want to have here so so these are the trees that we generated from LiDAR, so is there real existing trees? Um, what we can do is play here with a, a little bit of these values to increase the number of trees, for example. So the visualization changes. And well, what we, if we don't want that, and what we just want is just create our own patterns or modify these patterns. So I want you to try now playing with this as well, the best end, you will see that it should be the opposite. It should be all the opposite number of trees that are occupying all the darker areas. 
So this white is this larger than and smaller than is really important to know what we are selecting. The other thing is just let's replace now this with the EM we calculated from the trees. From the sorry, with the, the, the D, uh, let's replace this with the DM and let's see what are the results. So here we are. So basically, it's all the information, all the areas, it's covering all the areas that it's, they are lighter, right? So what we can do is instead of using this, the larger. Let's try to use the smaller. So you will see a completely different story, right? All the darker areas now here are have been selected for the generation. And these correspond to areas of these are much darker because there are areas that are steep areas. Okay, that are not exposed to the zone. So you generate the the trees in a different way and we just can you just can play also with this value to identify one particular range that you may want to do it you may want to display so this is basically the tutorial of today and you can also modify this um and automatically will be adjusted here so let's imagine that we're not going to use this image. We're going to use the other image, or maybe we can use this image. And let me try opening the image in the existing image in Photoshop. We are file open, and let's open the DM. Now let's make this darker color. I want some trees in the middle, right? So we just select. Sorry. We just select this area. And let's change the color. And let's choose. Oh, let's choose our. I don't know what's going on with my. Oh. Uh, Let's choose the color here and we draw something white there. Okay, it's an extreme case. And save. What we're going to have here is an automatic update. So now it's thinking. Um, so you will have an uh, updated version of the trees with that hole in the middle assuming that we we got it right where is the grasshopper okay so we have here it doesn't show because we are selecting other values so where we is what happened if we use this So this is that should be this largest brightness. So we need to increase here. And there is where we find this point. So what we're doing here is just we increase considerably. So more than 0 0.7, 0 0.9 in this case. These are the brightest parts in the image, and they appear here. So you can create your own compositions 
just just need to respect the ratio and the number of pixels you can create your own compositions of colors in um, Photoshop um, using different layers you can create another layer on top of the DM and start drawing their whiter areas and different smoother smoothing the, co the, the, the areas uh, around or blurring it and so you will have um, small transition between lighter and darker areas and then you you can import that image here sampling and then you will create your own patterns of vegetation another tutorial I will teach you how to generate this but according to considering values such as aspect or a slope for example you can plant in steep areas or in flat areas but this is a good technique if you want to create your own patterns and you want to be perhaps be a bit um, bit creative with um, let's say um, uh, Photoshop and you're good on Photoshop then this is a very good uh, strategy so okay see you in a ne next tutorial this was a bit long but it's because it require a lot of uh, techniques and methods and I hope this is useful for you thank you